What is up everybody and welcome to the two hour pain cave extravaganza. So we're gonna be going from the treadmill to do the two body weights, to treadmill, to body weight, to treadmill, to body weight, back and forth, back and forth for two hours. So we're gonna start on the treadmill for 10 minutes then we're gonna be moving into some body weight workouts, 100 reps, we're gonna be doing push-ups, we're gonna be doing sit-ups, we're gonna be doing air squats and some back widows to make sure that we hit every single part of the body and also get some miles in. I wanted to do this because the other body weight workouts were just taking way too much time. I wasn't getting the mileage in that I needed to for my next ultra. So this is the solution. Just, <laughs> just slowly dying on this treadmill for two hours every week. But we're gonna be talking about what we did, to, what we did this week. We're gonna be talking about the runs that I did getting ready for my next ultra marathon, which should be the Vermont 100. I'm not gonna be putting any speed on there. So if there are some crazy people, there's some average savages out there that wanna follow along and do this workout with me, you run at your own pace. Most of these runs are gonna be kind of lower, lower, uh, lower pace just because it's the last workout of the week, kind of just, you know, stretching out working out or, uh, you know, moving into the next week. So it's going to be a long one, but we're going to be running at a pretty moderate pace, probably around a little bit. I'm going to be staying around eight minutes to eight. Yeah, probably about eight minute mile pace to a nine minute mile pace the whole time. But <laughs> let's get going and let's start this workout. Ah, and if I just stop talking, it's because I'm sucking. But just maybe turn on another show. I like to watch Twitch. I like to watch uh, some Warzone. Oh, hold on. Just jiggling around. Make sure you have your fuel if you need it. All right. So we're just warming up. If you haven't even. Uh, if you need a little bit extra warm-ups, I like to do dynamic warm-ups. So usually what I'll do is a series of leg whips, front, back, side, do some butt kickers and everything like that, just to make sure that your body is properly warmed up before you actually start going. <laughs> That's actually kind of a lie because I have been known to be the worst freaking person for warming up. And, uh, Definitely going to need to be changing that. The weather is so cold out here. Basically, most of my runs this week were either in my neighborhood or on the treadmill just because it's so cold. And that warming up is probably really important to make sure, I whistled, <coughs> to make sure that you don't run into any problems or pull any muscles when you're running. But let's get this first 10 minutes, first 10 minutes done, and then we'll move on to our body weight workout. So one thing with this workout, it's gonna be making sure my breathing is good. <laughs> I've been known to be a mouth breather, especially when I run, and that is not efficient at all. Sometimes, sometimes I'll catch myself just mouth breathing, and pretty much hyperventilating on the trail, and I have to stop, recollect myself, and then get going again. So yeah, make sure on this first 10 minutes, you're going nice and slow, just warming up. I'm running about at an eight minute mile, 8.30 minute per mile pace right now. Just warming up, getting the legs moving, getting the body nice and uh, warmed up. This is my whole setup, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. 
Oh yeah, one other thing. The sides of my hair fell off. I don't know where the fuck it went. All I got is this bun left. <laughs> so I had my COVID mane for about, I think I was growing it about eight months. And it's, it was really long and super freaking annoying. I don't understand how women or men have long hair. It's just always in your face and wet and stinky. And then you just pull it back and you have this stupid ponytail on your head. And it just, and you get this stupid headache because of your dumb hair. It just makes no sense. If everybody had short hair, if my wife decided to cut her hair, really short, maybe not this short, but really short, I would have no problem. Because long hair is probably one of the stupidest freaking things ever. It just makes no sense, it just gets in the way. That was the most annoying eight months of my life. Probably not of my life, but it was really annoying. So I had to make sure that I could still annoy my wife so I'm growing out this crappy mustache again and brought out the man bun, the Nordic Viking Maui warrior man bun. <laughs> so if you're not married yet, make sure that you, <laughs> make sure you get married to somebody that you can just mess with and uh, get stupid haircuts. So we're starting to warm up a little. One of the big things with running on the treadmill, especially for me, is running and watching my form. So my form would dramatically change from when I was outside to inside. And my breathing changed a lot too with treadmill running. I would basically not breathe out of my mouth, which is probably better, but my form was, I think, and I think it's because I got bored and a little lazy when I'm running on a treadmill, but I would heel strike a lot. And the next day, my legs and my shins used to feel like they did when I was young and I'll get shin splints all the time. And it's because I would just get lazy with my form. So when you're running on the treadmill, definitely make sure you're very conscious of how your form is. Try to run almost exactly how you would run outside. At least that's what helped me. Just trying to land on that midfoot kick up, that like kick up on the back of your leg and everything. Because if you change your form on your treadmill, it's only gonna hurt you. All right, we're at seven minutes. Three more minutes and then we'll hit up some body weight workouts. So if you see me looking around, it's because I have my whole switcher set up right here. So it looks pretty uh, high tech. But basically I'm just gonna hit that button and I'll go to the mat. We'll move right over there. It's 
so that'll make it a little bit more seamless, a little less uh, editing also. And I got my mic, my mic. I got my mic right here too. So it's just gonna follow me around and you can hear me talk about nothing for two hours, which will be great. One more minute. Check your form. Check how your foot's striking the treadmill. Check your breathing. I'm a little bit more tired than I usually am because I'm talking. And so nobody wants to run with me up here. So I'm usually just listening to podcasts or listening to the nature when I'm on the trails. I'm not used to talking and running. Need to find a trail running group or something. Get some miles in with. All right, coming up. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Going over. All right, we're gonna start with push ups 25. Ooh. to squats, 25. Shoulder width apart, hands above your head. Mouth breathing. This is gonna be a long two hours. <laughs> Add an extra one in. Going over to sit ups, 25. Make sure you don't have to do the workouts the same speed as me. If you're going a little bit slower, You can either just slow down or stop when I stop. Matters on what you're trying to focus on. If it's just general fitness, you might want to try to get in all your body weight movements and then just run a little bit less. Or if you care more about the running, do your workouts. And then whoa, do the run. Wait, that doesn't even make sense. If it's the run you're worried about, then when I'm back on the treadmill, just get right back on. I have not been counting these sit-ups. So I'm just gonna do 10 more. <laughs> is what you call a shit show. Right. Now we're gonna go into the back widows. So we're just pushing up. There you go. 
and you're trying to squeeze your shoulder blades together like you're trying to hold a pencil between your shoulder blades getting that nice pause up the top will help activate all those muscles in your shoulder blades and your traps I'm not doing a good job counting I think that's what 15 I don't know Let's just do 10 more. Once again, we're doing this for two hours. So if you miss a couple, whatever, just make sure you're working hard. I am not that strict besides putting in the work. As long as you put in the work and you feel like you got crushed at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. All right, back weight. Back onto the treadmill. All right, so we're at five, four, three, two, one. Move it again. Oof. All right. So once again, it doesn't really matter. It does matter. But if you uh, lose count like I always do, just because I'm a scatterbrain, just make sure you're putting in the work. Make sure that you're somewhat getting that 25. If you want to go slower, go slower. Just run a little bit less. If you want to focus on your running, just hop right back on when I'm on. But that took about five minutes. So we got Generally, it's going to be 10 minutes of running, 5 minutes of body weight. And this is the classic, the classic ranger death run. Whew. Just run your ass off, get smoked for a little bit, run your ass off, get smoked a little bit, run your ass off, get smoked a little bit, until somebody starts falling out, then you turn around. And that's what happens when somebody misses formation. You get death run. All right, so get your breathing under control. Get your breathing under control. Okay. All right. Gonna go a little quiet, try to recover from that, and then we'll get moving. Two minutes in, keep head up. Don't start slouching. Make sure you watch your posture on the treadmill. So as you get tired and we start moving through this workout, parts of your body will wanna break down while you're running. So if your abs, your core is sore, you might wanna slouch kind of go forward or if your hips and your legs get tired you might sit down on your stride so really be cognizant of how your posture is while you're running keeping that good posture really keeps you in the game keeps good air going through your fucking system that f word was uncalled for <laughs> keeps air going through your system you're nice and upright. Keeps your running form nice and efficient. So 
sorry if I sniffle a lot. I uh, have really crappy sinuses and usually when I'm running on trails, I'm that guy that passes you and it's like, good evening. And there's boogers just flying out of my nose. So you hear a lot of uh, mouth breathing and snorting. It's this guy, cause he's got cruddy sinuses. So let's see what we did this week. So we're wrapping up about a 50 mile, a 50, 50 mile, 50 to 60 mile week with this run. I think we're at 46 right now. Then with this run, we'll be over 50. So starting the week off, I usually like to start the week off with a somewhat easy, uh, longer run. So usually around 10 miles I like to do on Mondays, just cause it kind of, uh, wakes you up for the, wakes you up for the week, for the training week, but it doesn't degrade you. So you can put in some good, uh, so you can put in some good uh, speed work if you need to or hill work later on in the week. So on Monday, I had to stay in our community. <laughs> our community is about like a quarter mile little loop. And I call it our, <laughs> I call it my neighborhood treadmill because I just run around in circles. Like it's, uh, like it's a track. And I'm doing old school track and field. But sometimes I'll go into the community next to ours. And that's about a half, half mile loop. But they have a large incline and decline, which is nice to work on maintaining your form and speed on hills. But it is sometimes annoying when you're just trying to get some miles in and you have to deal with the icy downhill or uphill but that monday run i went into both communities <coughs> and just ran around in circles it was about eight eight thirty mile per hour um, pace just kept it easy nice conversational pace and tried to get my body woken up for the week let's see what we got. Yeah, about 8.45. Yeah, that was actually a little bit slower than normal. So it's closer to the 8.50s range. Except for the first mile. The first mile, I always come out fast because I'm a noob and can't freaking control myself sometimes. So the first mile was 8.15 and then went down to 848. But it was snowing that day. I was gonna hit the trails <laughs> after work. But the snow up here in the great north is ridiculous. And those trails, they're, uh, you can't get any machinery up on those trails. So it's just like snow packed basically running in quicksand which is a good workout every once in a while but I did not want to dig through some snow on that day but yeah, I keep saying but that was a good run though good zone one zone two run You're just hanging out getting ready those eight mile, eight, eight to 12 miles is like a really good run. It makes me feel good. It makes me really want, especially when I run slow. I don't know. I don't know if this is just me, but I don't think so. But slow long runs always make me want a beer. So I definitely was hankering for a beer that entire run. Right. Got a 
to control my breathing for a little. Hopefully you guys have a, some good music on, good podcast on, good video game streamer. <laughs> good video game streamer on. I don't know why the hell I like to watch video game streamers because I don't play that many video games and when I do I just get destroyed. Never won a game of Warzone. That's how good I am. <laughs> Not much time with uh, two baby girls, so got to play it at night. All right, about one more minute, and we'll go into our body weight workouts. Those push-ups are a little hard, so I might go a little bit slower on those. I got my bird chest coming out because I've just been running for so long. <laughs> 10 seconds. And stop. Alright, moving over. Here go push-ups. 25. Oh, push-up game is weak. All right, going into sit-ups, not sit-ups, squats. 25. I haven't done barely any legs just because I've been running so much. Like, smoked. Do a couple uh, deadlifts. However you want to do your sit-ups, or God, <laughs> however you want to do your squats. Doing what makes you feel best. But try to get that 90 degrees. So you're working all those leg muscles. I think that was 16. Good, not counting, because uh, I'm sucking. I'm gonna be editing this video and counting my reps and just be like, what the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> All right, going into setups, 25. Try to keep your hands behind or near your head. So you're utilizing your core fully instead of using momentum to get you up. If you need to use momentum, try to keep them as close to your fists as possible. So one easy way is make fists like you're boxing next to your temples and keep them touching and if you need momentum push them in front of your face like you're pulling forward like this and that'll help you I have no idea what number I'm at I need a clicker. I need an assistant to freaking count my reps for me. All right, back widows. 
So try not to do any movement or shoot your neck forward. All that movement is coming from your elbows sliding under you and you're making that crunching or squeezing motion with your shoulder blades. So what you should be really feeling is your shoulders and I really feel it in my traps just because they get a little smoked from the push-ups too. If you want a little bit more, squeeze harder at top and pause for about one to two seconds. I don't know what I'm at. Is that 20? Tighten your core while you're up too. Because if you don't keep a tight core, the pressure can't go into your lower back. So if you start feeling it in your lower back or anywhere other than your back and your traps, make sure you're tightening your core and that'll keep you, keep you nice and safe. All right, we're at 30 seconds. All right, we're moving. All right. So 30 minutes in, going into our third running set. All right, gonna recover from that last work. Remember your posture, remember your breathing. So there might be some weeks where the only thing we're gonna be doing is running. <laughs> and those are the weeks where I have to make up for runs just because of work and babies and everything that's going on. Some of these last runs, I have to make up my mileage. So maybe some weeks we'll come in here and get 15 to 16 miles. <laughs> that's actually what I did. Friday because it was snowing. We had a winter storm advisory, so I couldn't go anywhere. But the ice, the road was pure ice. So how to do my long run on a treadmill? Two hours plus, only on the treadmill. That was great. So we're moving along nicely. About two minutes into your run. So the next day, Monday, I had the eight minute mile, eight minute mile. On Monday, I had an eight mile run. And then on Tuesday, I had to drive about eight to nine hours total that whole day. And so I was driving all through New England in my Ford Fiesta ST, just burning rubber, <laughs> freaking going everywhere, listening to podcasts, just droning. So didn't have good food, sat there all day, got all crampy, didn't have water until I stopped at a gas station, which is 100% my fault. But I got home later than normal. Played with the babies, kissed the wife, and only got in about four, yeah, four miles. 
they kind of took that as like a extra recovery day but I did put in a little bit of work they're about 830s a little bit faster mile per hour uh, runs but I wanted to make sure that all that build up and just sitting there got worked out with some running kind of shake my legs out because if you don't and you just sit there all day which if you work in an office or you drive for a living you want to make sure that you shake those legs out so really good world a really good warm up and then get some movement in because that's how like chronic just soreness and just feeling like crap really sets in it's just sitting there all day go out for a walk do some running do some yoga that's what I did did uh, four miles and then a quick 30 minute yoga session to uh, really emphasize stretching out that uh, hip flexors because that's the thing that really gets tight when you're sitting all day are your hip flexors and all that movement while you run or really do anything is derived from that hip flexor so I think that really set me up for the rest of the week I didn't feel like crap like I normally would and when I'm driving all this is just me because I'm a fatty when I'm driving there's something about McDonald's oh man get that Big Mac with 10 piece chicken nugget and a large fry and then you put it on your dashboard with some ketchup and you're driving in this little tiny Fiesta ST and you're like <laughs> and that's what I like to do that's just my fatty ways give me some McDonald's yeah, I think a majority of my degradation of running or a little bit extra in the mid section came from driving and getting some of that tasty delicious Dunkin Donuts <laughs> see that's the problem with a lot of fitness channels or fitness people you gotta enjoy some McDonald's sometimes that's why we run right so we can eat like bullshit drink some beers that's why I run so I can enjoy the finer things in life <laughs> like a well-plated McDonald's meal with wine glasses full of <laughs> icy and then washing it down with a nice tasty IPA oh oh buddy oh buddy I'm fat oh I'm not fat pretty skinny guy but I'm skinny fat I have skin I have fat tendencies I like to I like to work for my uh, crappy food intake all right we're about seven minutes in two and a half minutes left of running <clears throat> if those body weight workouts are kind of uh, cooling you down more then you can always increase your pace just make sure you stay at that good conversational pace maybe a little bit more where you're talking and having to breathe a little but you want to keep it pretty chill today I think we might be able to get around 10 miles in that'd be good that'll put us about 56 miles for the week not bad next week's the deload week so reeling back 
on that actual running volume. And then we're gonna bump it up the week after that. Watch your posture. Watch how your feet are hitting the treadmill. Typically, at least these are the cues I look for. If it sounds a lot louder while I'm running, I know my form is all messed up. So if you hear something like that, then you're probably sucking. You've got to back it down. Pride is good, but pride can get you hurt. So just push it down a little, recover, and then bring it back up. About 30 seconds out. Five, four, three, two, one. Go into body weight. All right, push ups. Might go a little slower on these ones. Because I am starting to get tired. Mats are moving around. 10. Got five more. Always try to make sure that your last five are good, slow, proper form. Gross looking. Three, five, sit up. Sit ups, squats, come on. One. Three more. One more to miss, make sure. All right, going into the sit ups. Here's popping out. Oh man. My core has been smoked from all the running I'm doing. And climbing really engages your core. So if you're doing a lot of elevation gain, you're actually getting a pretty good core workout. Because eight. Call me out in the content or comments if I'm messing up my count. I'm at 13. Back widows. 
make sure you uh, look up these workouts if you're not sure on how to properly do them. Because if you have a good knowledge of body weight workouts, you can really get a good workout wherever you're at, traveling around. During COVID-19, all the gyms freaking closed. Go out for a run, find a park bench, do some good workouts. I think, what the fuck am I at? 14? I'll say 14, 15. Back is smoked. All right. So I think that was twenty five. All right, let's keep going. About 45 minutes. Oh, we're not even halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. All right, hair's starting to get wild. <laughs> gonna take a couple minutes regain my breathing and then we'll talk about Wednesday this uh, basement if you can't tell is not finished and it's freezing outside. So this basement is freaking freezing. I was working down here, but I would have to bundle up, pretty much wear a coat and shoes and have a heater on my back and my hands because it was so cold down here. Couldn't handle it. Moved upstairs and now I just work out down here. So it's pretty nice because I don't get that sweaty because it's so cold down here good temperature control, if you will. Starting to mouth breathe a little. Gotta get my breathing back in check. Not a total about four miles of running so far. Not bad. <clears throat> These workouts are gonna be morely about perceived effort rather than perceived effort and time under stress. Don't really worry about your speed. Don't really worry about your distance. Worry about how much work you're putting in, how much effort you're putting in. Because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. It's how much effort you're putting out. Are you giving it everything you got? in. Let's see what we got. So I'm going through my Strava. All right. Ooh, Wednesday was a good day. 
So that's why I was saying I was glad I did that shakeout run on Tuesday after driving all that time because I had a pretty good, um, is that the day? No, that wasn't the day, but I did have a good workout on that day. So what I did was really focused on maintaining, maintaining a certain pace on the treadmill and then threw in a couple fast ones, a couple fast uh, miles. So it's kind of keeping your body guessing while you're running. So I did 10 miles on the treadmill that day. And every, after the third mile, after every other mile, I ramped it up about maybe it's like eight minute mile per pace to a 7.30, just to get that work in. So it's kind of, it's kind of breaking your body out of that pace when it gets used to it and making your cardio, your legs, uh, uh, how you say, confused, I guess. So it's always keeping your, making your body guessing. It really wears you out. So kind of fluctuating between those paces, but that was a good run. I averaged about an 822 mile pace. 10 miles, my moving time was 100 and 100. My moving time was an hour and 23 minutes. So that's pretty good. Really focused on that one too, was uh, our cadence. So a big thing that I've been working on is my running form and my cadence. So kind of staying on midfoot to tippy toes almost. <laughs> Working on that really good kickback, putting it in the cradle and shooting it right underneath me to push myself forward. I've been working on that a lot. But I've been looking for a coach because <laughs> I can't freaking do too many cues on myself just because I don't have the expertise. I'm just some Ding dong that doesn't know how to quit and just keeps moving down the road. But I was trying to find a coach. And it seems like all the running coaches or ultra marathon coaches are so busy, they don't even respond to my emails. Emailed three or four separate <coughs> coaches to see if they could help me with my training plan and my form. Willing to pay some buku bucks, not buku, some moderately reasonable money to get some help with running so I can break out of this somewhat plateau. But they don't respond to me. Maybe it's because I got a stupid man bun. Now I look like a, I don't know what I look like. <laughs> like a Mortal Kombat character or something. Got about three more minutes. Two and a half to three more minutes of movement. Go back into body weight workouts. Check your breathing. Check your posture. Check how your feet are hitting the treadmill. Should have a good sweat going right now. Sure, if you have it or need it, you have water on it. If you need to take a break, jump off the treadmill, take a break, drink some water, get some electrolytes, and get back on it. You don't have to rewind it, you don't have to pause it, you don't have to do any of that. We're gonna be here for two hours. So just 
take a break. Jump back up. Let's get it. And as we progress, you can go further and further. And hopefully by the end of our middle of this year, end of this year, we can all be running two hours straight at a pretty good pace, non-stop. All right, one more minute. My wife said I look like a Fallout character. Maybe like a one of the randomized stock Fallout characters that are like, oh, what the hell? How the hell did they randomize that? <laughs> Who's he? Filipino? Or what's going on with that guy? 30 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Jumping off, and more push-ups. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bit slower. Take your time on these, because I think we're above 100. Let's go 10 at a time. In. Rest, stretch, back at it. Ten. Rest, stretch it, and five good ones. Squats. Make sure where you're doing these, you're doing good, easy breaths. I usually just try to breathe a little bit normal. Because when I do exaggerated breathing, like weightlifters, I just end up hyperventilating. I have no idea how many I got. I think that was 20. Back to sit ups. About 16. Fucking fix this hair. And we're going at your own pace, so if you're still going, just keep at it. I've always been so slow. 
at sit-ups. And my core smoked. Oh. Right. 25 of these back windows is kind of ridiculous, but we committed. So might as well do it now. Oh. All right. All right, we're halfway there. We are at an hour. All right. So we gain your breathing. Check your posture. Check your speed. Take a couple minutes. Get your breath back. So, I think maybe in the future, what we'll do is more time-based body weight workouts. So then it's a little bit cleaner transition time. So maybe 10 minutes on, 10 minutes on the treadmill, 10 to 15 minutes on the treadmill, then five minutes body weight, one minute transition time, and then back on. That might be a better setup. Let me know what you think. Once again, this is two hours of movement. So if you're taking a little bit more time doing your body weight workouts, that's okay. Finish them up, cut them off short, do whatever you need to do to work on what you really need to work on, whether that's running more, my body weight's more. I just need to make sure I keep doing my body weight workouts, weightlifting, keep my body nice and strong as I'm running, because it all helps. It's all relative. I gotta also remember not to just look down or off into space. <laughs> so it's not just some psycho staring at something for two hours. Good uh, coating of sweat is starting to accumulate now. I might need to push up my pace a little bit. It's just my talking will get very labored if I go any faster than like an 8.30, eight minute mile per pace. I'll be like, <laughs> And then I'm waiting for a run. <laughs> just... oh, that switcher looks cool. <clears throat> All right. So, back to this week's training. So, what did we do? Ah, so on Thursday, 
we did the same thing we did on Monday. Almost exactly the same pace, same distance, same route. Did eight miles around my neighborhood treadmill and then went into the guest, not the guest, the neighborhood next to us and ran a little bit also. So averaged around 820, 828 mile per, miles per hour pace for eight miles. The moving time was about an hour and seven. So I think that's when actually the second helping of the winter storm actually came in. So I was actually driving around a little bit, not as much as on Tuesday, but I was still about two hours in the car, had all my clothes ready to go. I was about to go to one of my favorite trails, <clears throat> but looked it up, looked up the trail conditions. It was snowing all day too. And those trail conditions were basically like, you're gonna be on Hawk fighting an Imperial fleet of AT-ATs digging through the snow, trying to get out. And I did not want to deal with that because usually under those conditions, my pace drops to about 12 miles per hour. 12 minute mile paces, not 12 minutes mile per hour. I've been saying that wrong this entire time. But 12 minute miles to 13 minute miles because you're going up a mountain and you're digging through snow. So it's more of a leg workout. It's more like hill repeats than actually running. And I have to get these legs moving. I do like to do it though. Last week I did two or three runs trudging through snow. And it's really nice to be on the trail because there's a lot less people out on the trails when it's snowing like that. <clears throat> it's really quiet. You can hear everything just because everybody, all the animals are all settled because it's cold. Only a couple of birds are flying around you're in the middle of nowhere on a mountain by yourself. It's really peaceful. Highly recommend it. <laughs> but last week I was running and it was ridiculous. Fresh powder everywhere, trudging through that. And I should have known that the trails were not optimal for running. Everybody in the parking lot had skis, cross country skis, and snowshoes. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe this isn't the best time to be running. <laughs> I did it, trudged through it, passed a couple of people on skis. No big deal. <laughs> About three more minutes. the head up, try to keep your gaze up, always looking forward, that's why I don't like these treadmills, but they have a tray right here, or a TV, because you end up, I see this in the gym too, and I do it all the time, you end up running, like looking forward, and it's not conducive to proper running form. So I have a TV behind this camera that you watch it straight on while I just stare at a blank wall for hours and hours looking.
Hello darkness. I don't know how that song goes. I don't know how any song to go. Boogers. Boogers are starting to slide. One more minute. Make sure you're drinking water. We're at the mile. We're past the hour mark. And usually when I'm doing longer runs, I'll wait until 45 minutes to an hour to start taking any electrolytes. That's usually when I feel like my body actually needs it and will utilize it. Probably won't be doing it now because I just ate recently. But if you need it, make sure you take your electrolytes, drink your water, and if you have if you have tailwind, that's what I like to use in these bottles. Mix it up, drink that shit, hydrate. Oh, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Going over. Twenty-five push-ups. Right. Fuck these mats. Fuck you, mats. Oh shit. <laughs> It's a weird number to stop at. That's what. Oh, bad. I gotta check that. I turned down. Twenty-five. I think that's 20, if not more. Going into the sit ups. Oh my God. Every time I do sit ups, I'm just gonna say, this is my core. If you're struggling, it's okay. If you're not, go faster. Be stronger. Beat me. See how my hands are starting to go in front of my face. It's because my core is smoked. Control. Oh, my core is smoked. Stay with me. I better get past me. Leave me here to die. Oh, I'll do five more, I think. One, two, 
three. Oh man. Four. Oh. Alright. Back with us. Yeah. This gets a little bit harder as you get sweaty because my skin doesn't want to slide. So make this work however you can. What am I at? I think 15. I think more than that. I have no idea how many that was, but hopefully it was 25. Right. So we're at hour 15. Right. 45 more minutes, guys. Let's keep at it. Keep that motivation up. I know right now you're probably starting to get bored, but just keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep at it. You guys want to increase your pace. Run a little bit faster. I'm going to go faster. switch over and see if that camera got messed up. Eh, a little bit. Should be okay. <clears throat> Alright, just uh, trying to get my breathing back in check. And then we'll go over big run, a big Friday run. That was a good one. So, Friday's run. Friday was my first, well, Friday and Saturday were technically like my long runs. So, Friday, I ended up doing 16 miles. And this year, I'm putting an emphasis on really working hard on those long runs. So, the year before, and in 2019, 
my long runs were kind of long or casual runs. And I wasn't really pushing them. And that was, in my opinion, I won't know until after I do another 100 miler, was a mistake. Because what I really think, especially for ultra marathons, is you need to focus and put a lot of work into your long runs opposed from those week, the weekly runs, <clears throat> the shorter 10 miles, eight mile runs. So I really pushed it hard on this one. And I did an average of eight minutes, three seconds for 16 miles. And what I did was I warmed up for about 15 minutes doing dynamic stretching, leg whips and all that. And I was supposed to, <laughs> I was supposed to go slower for the first two, I ended up going faster. And then I took mile three as a break. So my first two miles were 745s, which is fast for me. I'm a slow, slow runner in comparison to most people that run a lot. So 745s through Mile three was an 8.36. And then from that point on, I went on, off, on, off. So I went from like a 8.30 to a 7.30, 8.30 to a 7.30, 8.30 to a 7.30, all the way until mile 15. So I was really pushing it on those on miles especially when I got to about 13 miles in, 12 miles in, I was smoked. And having to run like 7.30, wow, you have all the week's work on your legs. And then 13 miles on that run, and then do a 7.30, ooh wee, I was, uh, I was sucking. The last three miles I had to, turn on some music to get some motivation. I normally don't ever run with music on, but put on some Rap God, put on some Logic, run to the beat, set some fire on this treadmill. That ended up being a really good workout. So most of my long runs, are gonna be like that. And then once you start getting closer to the Vermont, to the Vermont 100, these two hour workouts are gonna be probably interval fartlek type workouts only on the treadmill. So really working on getting those back-to-back -back long runs. I think <clears throat> maybe in a month or two, I start ramping up to like 20 miles on Friday and then 12 miles on Saturday or 16 miles, 12 miles, and so on and so forth. I think on the highest week, I end up running a 30 miles and then a 10 mile. So really ramping up those mileage as we get closer and closer to the Vermont 100, which I am on the wait list. So if for some reason that wait list doesn't clear out, I might have to do something else. <clears throat> might do a solo presidential traverse run. Try to do that in a day. That might be good as an alternative. A lot of climbing, but it's not that, uh, not that long. It does take a while, but it's only about 23 miles, 26 miles, I think, something around there. Less than 30, but it's a hard run. So maybe I can do that. <laughs> or maybe there's another smaller 100 I could do. Because I got the Vermont 100 in July, and then I got the Mid State Massive 100 miler in October. Yeah. 
We'll see. We'll deal with that bridge when it's burning. So that's how that thing goes. <laughs> but yeah, Friday was a good, good freaking run. A lot of effort put into that run. This run's shaping up to be pretty good too. Putting in some good effort. I'm around 7.4 miles total running. So it's going good. I got my watch linked up to the treadmill since I keep having to stop and start it. seconds <clears throat> watch your form watch your breathing as we move into these that next iteration of body weight movements 10 seconds five four three two one Going to body weight. All right, push ups. Chest is smoked. Abs are smoked. I gotta pay. Your critiquist. <laughs> Seventeen. Twenty. On the stroke bus. Three, four, five, six. As you can see, I kind of lean towards this side because my left side is less dominant. So, really be cognizant of your body and see how it's dipping because when I get really smoked on runs, my left hip starts dipping and my form starts struggling. So I make sure I'm cognizant of that so it can prevent injury. I don't know how I'm at. Let's do sit-ups. I'm gonna be flailing around on these sit-ups because my core, once again, for the 18,000th time, is smoked. Two, three, four, five. Nine. There. The beer I drank yesterday probably doesn't help. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. 
19, five more. Nope, there you go, five more. As you can see, I'm dipping. Putting more pressure on my right side because my left side is weak. Something I definitely need to work on. It's almost detrimental. All right. I'm gonna put this under for those back widows. Help me help my elbows slide a little bit. I noticed if I uh, put some shirts under your arms or a pad, help slide them so you can get a better pinch. One, two, three, four, five. Back to running. All right, so we're back on. If you noticed a uh, hard cut, it's because there was a hard cut because uh, somehow a couple diapers ended up in the wash upstairs, and I don't know how many of you people know about diapers, but there's these jelly, jelly type pods inside of it. And if it gets ripped, those little pods go everywhere. So the washer took the diapers, ripped all the pods everywhere. So there's diaper jelly all upstairs and had to figure it out with the wife on how the diapers got in there and how to clean it. <laughs> there wasn't much I could do. So, God bless you, Sam. All right, so we started this one about a minute late, just because those body weight workouts took a little bit longer. And then the hard cut. So we're just gonna run maybe like a, a minute, a minute shorter, just so we can get back on track. So it ends up being 10 minutes running, five minutes body weight workout. All right, so I'm gonna get back to my breathing. I wasn't gone that long up and down the stairs a couple of times. So when something like that happens, you kind of have to get back into your rhythm. That happens a lot when you're running on the trail and the bubble guts start happening and you have to find a bush and you're squatting in the woods. <laughs> it takes you out of your rhythm and you either have to catch up with the pack you were with, or find your own rhythm again. So taking a couple good deep breaths, falling back in to your running. Running rhythm is always good. Being cognizant of little things like that has really helped me on my running. Because a lot of times, I'm just a freaking Monster, monster, 
mongoloid like barbarian type person I don't know how you say that what's the politically correct term on saying that I'm just like a knuckle dragger I'm like run must run fast and I end up blowing out so kind of being a little bit more cognizant a little bit more prepared coming at it more tactically is always a good idea taking your breaks when you need to falling back into your rhythm when you need to kind of a more mature ultra running I always get distracted start running too fast and I hit the front of the treadmill when I get excited <laughs> so yeah Friday was a good run. I was gonna do this run. I was gonna do this run on Saturday, but Sammy's, uh, my wife's parents came in to town, had to eat a bunch of barbecue, spend some time with the in-laws, play with some babies. We spent about an hour and a half two hours just freaking picking up barbecue because it was 30 minutes away it took about 45 minutes waiting and then had to drive back so anyway it wasn't even good barbecue but I guess you can't complain because you still got to eat barbecue it's just New England, the Northeast, I don't think is well known for their barbecue. Now, if somebody can prove me wrong and uh, give me some of that Texas style barbecue, some of that Kansas City barbecue, some of that good good <laughs> up here in New England, send it my way. Because I have not been impressed. Speaking of that, the food in New England, we need some more freaking Asians. I need some Koreans up in New Hampshire. I need some Filipinos up in New Hampshire. I need some freaking uh, more Japanese. I need some more Asians up in New Hampshire because I'm missing some good Asian food. I go to some, oh, you can eat Korean barbecue. Hit that, fry that meat. Sizzling music. Ah, ah, ah. So good. And it's meat. Meat's healthy, right? It is. In moderation. Just like everything else. Just like sugar is good in moderation when you're running because you need it. Oh. Get some Korean barbecue. Get some soju. I like to eat some good Filipino food. Ooh, wee! Give me some ponce, some barbecue sticks, some adobo. I'll cut somebody for that. Cut somebody. Some of that lumpia. Oh, oh buddy. Oh, buddy. All right, so if you're starting to get tired, just make sure in some of these iterations you, you uh, push it down. Keep moving, keep working. Just push it down a little bit. Don't kill yourself. This is perceived effort. This is, are you able to keep moving? Are you able to keep going for two hours? the pace a little bit so if my 
labored talking is annoying. Just turn it off. And let the good times roll. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand how some of these YouTubers can just talk and talk and talk about nothing to nobody. I'm pretty sure this whole time I've pretty much said nothing. Right, about a minute left. Move into another iteration of body weight movements. I don't even know how many we've done. I think we're gonna get like at least 200 push ups, sit ups, squats. It's a pretty good workout. 30 seconds. Last 30 seconds, control your breathing. Fix your posture. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, going over to body weight. Fix this guy. Got 25. Let's try to get this in five minutes. Seventeen. More twenty. Five more. If you're not sucking right now, especially on these body weight workouts, you're a beast. If you're not sucking right now, you gotta pace me on my next 100 miler. Cause none of my friends wanna pace with me. They're all like, Ew, I don't wanna run. I just wanna crush weights, which is fun. We might eight, ten. That's ten. Eleven. Fifteen. Twenty. All right, now for the ugliest sit-ups you'll probably see in any fitness channel. One, two, three, four. If you want to alter these sit-ups, you can. Straight legs, crunches, whatever you need to do. Is that six? I'll just say six. Seven. Thirteen. Five more. One. Two. This is basically all momentum. Three. Four. Five. All right. 
All right, back with us. Oh, my traps are starting to get smoked. One. Make sure you're watching your form on these because you don't want the pressure to go into your neck or lower back. Just tighten your core. Make sure you're doing that proper squeeze and try not to launch your head up forward. Eighteen. Nineteen. 20. Oh. All right. Back to running. We're a little bit late, but we'll take it. Guys. So this should be this is actually my last iteration. So we're gonna do our last 10 minutes running. One more body weight movement. And then we'll sign off on the treadmill with a walk. So catch your breath again, coming off that. starting to feel some pressure right here where my core has been struggling. And if you think about it, especially when you're climbing, you're really engaging that lower part of your core. That's where it hurts. It doesn't hurt, it's just pressure. So I'm gonna catch my breath especially on this last iteration. Do your deep breaths, breathe. Do your deep breaths. Regain. I think it's almost more tiring going up, getting on and off of the treadmill than just constantly running. My body's like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? Leave me alone. Just do something consistent, constant for two hours. Not all this bull crap. All right, so I am at nine miles of movement so far. So I might, might ramp it up a little bit. Try to get 10. Oop, lowered it. Try to get 10. So on this last set, don't get focused on the finish line and letting your form, your breathing suffer. I know I always do that, especially on trails when I'm heading back and I know there's only two miles left. I start thinking about the finish, thinking about my car, thinking about food, and I'm like, and then I end up sucking the last two miles. Now, that's completely different than putting in a good kick. 
you have to be cognizant of the amount of pressure you put on your legs. The amount of pressure you put. That doesn't even make sense. You got to be cognizant of how you're running the entire time. Then make sure you're properly recovering, drinking water, getting good carbs, protein, all of those macronutrients to repair your body. I've been doing ice baths, which is basically just a barrel that I got from my soap company. Cut open the top, filled it up with water. It's so cold outside that it's 40 degrees. I can just jump in there, freeze my ass off for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and get a good ice bath recovery. That's been helping a lot. Rolling out, doing yoga really helps as well if you don't have access to ice baths. I know I use a roller almost every time after I run. And enjoy a tasty beer. We lost so many calories throughout the week. It's probably not a healthy way to look at it or a good way to look at it. But goddamn it, sometimes you earn a goddamn beer. Drink that motherfucker and enjoy it. your breathing, check your posture, check the noise of the treadmill, and if you're slapping your feet, check the rhythm of your breathing, check how you're swinging your arms, I'm a little high, but make sure you're not doing too much twisting craziness. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. <sighs> good run, good workout, good, good workout. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Hopefully you're getting your sweat on slowly chipping away, becoming an average savage. <laughs> We're the office workers. We're the people that sit in cars all day. We're the work from homers that go outside and kick some ass. That's an average savage. Got two babies, got a wife, got a full-time job. Going to the mountains, kicking ass, taking names, drinking beer, coming back. Got about a minute and a half left.
Head up. Gaze up. <laughs> Gaze up. Gaze up. Body straight. Knees driving. Feet kicking back. One more minute. Pushing it up. Going hard. Going fast. Put some stink on this last minute. Oh, push it. Put some stink on it. Keep your posture. Increase your cadence. Increase your leg drives. Go fast. Twenty seconds. Faster. Going faster. Got ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, switching over. Last set of body weight. All right. Take your time on these ones. Try to get the best form as possible on your last set. Just failing me right now. Got ten more. Let's get five. All the way down, all the way up. Ooh. Oh man, I'm sucking. All right, five more. This is that. Finish line bull crap I'm talking about. See the end, my body's like, no more. You're at the finish line, just quit. Five more. Two more. Going slower because I'm trying to get somewhat good form on these last 25. Struggle bus. 25. Two, three, four. I'm dripping sweat. Routine. I'm starting to lean forward on my squats because I'm smoked. I try to stay upright, up and down, pressure through the hills. I'm talking like I'm a personal trainer or some bull crap. I'm not a personal trainer. I'm just your average everyday asshole friend that will take you on workouts and runs that you don't want to be doing. <laughs> All right, 25 sit ups. What do you know? I'm smoked. One, two, three, four. Oh, 
15. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, one, two, three, three. Three, four, 25, cramping a little. <laughs> All right, let's do these silly back widows. We're never gonna do these again. They're not conducive to a lot of reps. Condu is that the right word? I don't know. One, two, three, <clears throat> four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. All right, I'm trying to keep my form good on these so I don't hurt myself. Ten. Go as slow as you need, or as fast as you need. But make sure the pressure is going in the right places. Isn't that a metaphor for life? I think that's 15. Oh. Oh. My traps are getting smoked and the pressure is going into my neck, which I need to fix. <sighs> Breathing. Traps. Yep, good. Okay. Make sure you reset if you feel pressure going into weird places. Last one. Good. All right. And we're done. All right. All right. So I'm just going to walk it off. There we have it. We are complete. We are at two hours, one minute, 10 miles of running. God knows how many push-ups, squats, sit-ups, and back widows. More than 200. I'll count them up, see how many reps we did. Put them on the screen right. Meow. Okay, yeah. So, did some running, 10 minutes on, five minutes off, 25, four workouts. Got in 10 miles once again, two hours of working out. If you got through it, good job. If you got through half of it, good job. Get back at it. Keep going, work hard. Consistency is key. So make sure tonight, drink your water, get your electrolytes back in, get a good meal in, shower up, roll yourself out, stretch out, do some yoga, relax, take some rest, get some good sleep. Sleep is so important. Try to get your most efficient amount of sleep. Mine's around seven hours. If I sleep anymore, I'm usually uh, a little groggy. If I sleep a little less, I'm really groggy. Get some good sleep and get ready to go again. Consistency, consistency, consistency. Meet me back again next week where we're gonna do another two hours in the pain cave. We're gonna keep ramping it up Workouts are always gonna change. We're not gonna be doing the same thing every time. Sometimes we'll just stay on the treadmill, do some uh, fart lick play, maybe some incline play. Um, and then we'll also be going back in, doing some more intricate uh, body weight workouts also. But thank you for being here. Like, subscribe, do whatever you need to do. Go on my social media. I post all my runs on there. Do everything, smash. Smash the like button, smash everything, become an average savage. I don't fucking know, I don't even know. Yeah.